All right, guys, I am back again to help you build a massive deadlift. In today's video, I'm gonna show you the three nastiest, filthiest deadlift variations you can do to achieve that. Now, I use these variations to build a 410 kilogram deadlift. That is 903 pounds. Also, some more exciting news. Today, I dropped the Deadlift Destroyer 13 week deadlift building program. If you wanna hear more about it, watch the video. Let's get to work, baby. It's not a weak point. The point is that when you get to that point, you're out of position and you can't lock it out because you need to maintain position. So that is why most of my deadlift training is based around being in the best position possible. Because when you're trying to lift heavy weights, eventually you just can't muscle it up anymore, okay? And welcome back to your mum's favorite channel on YouTube, Cult Strength. Today, yet again, I am here to help you increase your deadlift. Today's video, I am going to show you what I believe to be, in my opinion, three of the filthiest, nastiest deadlift building variations. Now, when I say that, I also mean they are incredibly effective in helping you achieve a monster deadlift no doubt about it and sometimes to achieve these things we have to put ourselves through a little bit of pain and that's what these variations are they are not for the faint of heart but they are guaranteed to increase your deadlift now i'm going to break them all down for you i'm going to talk you through the technique of each one how to execute it and you know i'll touch on what sort of rep range to use and when you should implement them in your training program I will also give you a little bit of a regression from each one because they are nasty when I say that I mean it. So I'll also show you a couple little things that you can do to make it slightly easier. And if you're lucky, I'll even show you a few ways to make it even harder. That's what she said. And also, very exciting news. Today, the Deadlift Destroyer Deadlift Program is live right now. It is a 13 week deadlift peaking program designed to get you the deadlift you've always wanted to achieve. If you want to hear more about what the program entails, hang around till the end of this video and I'm going to talk you through, you know, what's in the program and what you can expect. We'll take a moment and we'll get stuck into this first variation. Let's get it. All right, guys. Now, let's get started with this. The first deadlift variation that I'm going to show you that is absolutely guaranteed to increase your deadlift, if you put it in your program and do it, is the deficit snatch grip deadlift. Okay, so you may have seen me do these if you've been following for a while. Uh, you may have never heard of them. You may have heard of a deficit deadlift, but I'm here to show you what it is, why you should do it, and how to implement it in your program for a big deadlift. Okay, so why are we doing a deficit snatch grip deadlift? Well, there's multiple reasons, okay? Now, some of you may not know, deficit work is the best kind of deadlift work you can do to increase and improve your lockout strength. Now, contrary to what most people believe, which is that they should be doing rack pulls from their weak point, that's not actually your weak point, and I guarantee you, the reason that you miss lockout on your deadlifts, and it comes up relatively easy off the ground, is because you're losing your position off the ground. So, what the idea with this movement is, is that we are going to start from an extremely weak, disadvantaged position, and we're going to learn to build strength through that range, okay? If we can build strength through an incredibly weak position and range, when we go back to deadlifting from the floor with our regular hand position, our positioning and strength from that now very favorable position has increased dramatically. You're gonna be able to hold your position through to the top of the deadlift and you will realize that because you've held your position better, lockout is magically easier, okay? If you don't believe me, fucking try it. I promise you it'll work. Now quickly, what I'm gonna do is I'll give you a quick demonstration of this movement and then we'll talk a little bit about, you know, when you should put it in your program you know, and also 
to regress it and to progress it because you may be thinking, I want even more punishment than this. Or maybe you're thinking that's a little bit too gnarly for the moment. And there's probably a stepping stone to get there, which is true. And that's always not a bad thing, okay? It's always, you know, smart to build up to things, right? So if you've never done a, a deficit deadlift before without a snatch grip, maybe we'd try that first. And I'm gonna break that down for you as well. Now, one thing I'll add is when you're doing snatch grip deadlift work, I want you to wear straps. Now, a lot of you will say straps are bullshit, this and that. If you have your hands wide enough, you're not gonna be able to hold onto the bar. Okay, this isn't a grip exercise. This is an upper back building, position building exercise. The amount of hypertrophy and strength your upper back will develop from this movement is fucking crazy. All right, we'll set it up. Now, a deficit, if you step back a little bit M so I can see the old deficit here. It is three mats, okay, I use three mats. That's how high it is. I think people take the piss when they use one or two mats. Uh, so I think a minimum of three, but for me, the three mats is a sweet spot, okay? We do want to create a noticeable difference from our starting point, uh, but we don't want it to be so drastic that it's impractical. Okay, now where I put my hands on the barbell is a little different. Now keep in mind that a traditional snatch done by weightlifters um, they're done on a regular barbell, which is a little bit shorter than this. This is a deadlift bar, so it's slightly longer than a regular bar. And you will find that their kind of hands go out as wide as they possibly can, because well, what they're trying to do is catch a bar above their head. And the easiest way to do that is to shorten the distance that has to move, has to move, which is why they put their hands so wide. Now for us, I'll give you a, a guideline and a recommendation. Most bars have these lines here and they're roughly 81 centimeters apart, okay? Any, you know, good quality powerlifting bar, this is a deadlift bar, has the same markings. Don't go any closer than those lines. Now for me, I like to go roughly two inches outside of that line is where my hands start, okay? You might wanna start closer with your finger on the line here, but the goal would be to progress it to a wider grip, okay? The shitter our position is, off, this, off the floor, the better it's gonna be for our gains. I'm gonna do three repetitions and we'll chat. So, same setup with our stance as a regular deadlift, okay? We're not going any wider with our feet or any narrower. Now this will be uncomfortable for some people to get down to position. That's the point, fucking deal with it. If you want to, you can take your belt off if that helps, but for me, it doesn't really help. I can still get into position even though it's uncomfortable. Okay. Three repetitions. And keep in mind that I'm not gonna be able to get into a position where my chest is up at all, but I still need to brace with my lats and squeeze my lats so my upper back stays rigid. Alright guys, so there is a demonstration of a snatch grip deficit deadlift. Now, as you can see, it does look very different to a regular deadlift. The deficit is, you know, creating a larger range of motion. Now, that is also excellent for hypertrophy, okay? We're now moving the bar over a greater distance, which means we're now under tension for a longer time. So, time under tension for hypertrophy, this is an excellent exercise, okay? Now, I would also want to use this exercise in my program early on in comp prep or in the off season as a work capacity hypertrophy builder, okay? So for me, personally, I love using it at around 16 weeks out and I'll usually run this for about six weeks. Now, for me personally, I love working up to a heavy single over six weeks, but it always starts with volume, okay? so. I'll start my training program with sets of six to eight with these kind of movements, right? With this movement in particular. And that will decrease down over that six weeks until I work to around a max before I return to deadlifting from the floor like normal. Now, you don't have to do it that way. You can use it purely as a hypertrophy builder and you might, you know, work through rep ranges at eight to 12 reps, okay? And you might do it, you know, 20 weeks out, you know, until you're maybe 
16 to 12 weeks out, okay? So it's excellent in the off season as well because it is gonna have great carryover for you to your regular deadlift, whether you compete or not. Uh, you know, we're always peaking towards getting a bigger conventional deadlift. You know what I'm saying? And uh, now, one other thing I will touch on with this is that you can see with the, the wide hands, right? This is an extremely vulnerable and inefficient position for a deadlift. But again, that's the point of why we're doing this. With a regular deadlift, everything is really nice and compact, okay? With your hands, it's easy to squeeze your lats and hold position, right? Now, the reason that everything's so nice and stable is because we're compact. Now, we take our hands out here, it's much harder to get that same effective brace. We have to work a lot harder for it. And our upper back is gonna be taking a hell of a lot of brunt to hold position. Okay, that's why it is an excellent upper back builder. It's a staple in all of my, in all of my training. You know what I mean? I always start my prep for a deadlift with a snatch grip depth to deadlift. You can watch back over all my videos and you will see that. Now, if you wanted to regress this movement, right? And make it a little bit easier. I'll show you how you can do that. We can do a regular deficit deadlift, okay? I'll just quickly show you a demonstration. Again, technique remains the same as a normal deadlift. We're on the deficit, but instead of having our hands out here, we're now coming back into a regular position, okay? And then, same as a normal deadlift, lats on. Okay, easy peasy, right? Now, if you wanna make this slightly harder now, the harder version is my favorite, okay? I hit a 350 kilogram paused deficit snatch grip, the snatch grip deadlift um, at the end of my last snatch grip training block, okay? So the demonstration of this would be the same, but we're now pausing it as we break the floor. So this would be the ultimate snatch grip deadlift variation. As you can see, all right. Now, which one you want to implement in your training block is completely up to you. But the snatch grip deficit deadlift must be in yours if you're keen on having a big deadlift, okay? Greater range of motion, working on weak points you're gonna have a fucking solid lockout. Stop doing your rack pulls and implement these. That's what's up. All right, guys, so that's the first one, the snatch grip deficit deadlift. So I definitely do recommend that you try that. Now, with this second one, as you will notice, okay, most of my deadlift work is based around positioning. Positioning is so important and overlooked, okay? As I said before, a lot of people, they look to other places to fix these problems. Like they start doing overload work with rack pulls when that's really not the problem. Because let me just explain this to you and you can try it out if you want, right? Let's say you are a 250 kilogram deadlifter and you keep getting stuck with 260 right near lockout, okay? And you can't quite get it done. Now, this is a challenge if, if you believe rack pulls are the answer. Go and load up 270 kilos, 10 kilos more than what you're attempting, on a rack at your weak point where you're missing lockout. Try and pick it up. I guarantee you, you better rep it out, okay? It's not a weak point. The point is that when you get to that point, you're out of position and you can't lock it out because you need to maintain position. So that is why most of my deadlift training is based around being in the best position possible. Because when you're trying to lift heavy weights, eventually you just can't muscle it up anymore, okay? You have to develop fantastic technique and fantastic positioning, which is what these variations are really good for. A part, you know, like on top of obviously the hypertrophy benefits of the snatch grip, and even the next one I'm gonna show you because time under tension is insane. Right, now this is my baby. I, I come out with this motherfucking deadlift, okay? This is a deadlift devotion now you may have seen them in some of my earlier training videos it is nasty it is it is nasty i'm not gonna lie to you and i'm gonna give you a regression to this two different regressions because there's not really a progression to this 
that's how bad this motherfucker is. Okay, so what is it? Well, this is a combination of a paused deadlift and an RDO. Now, you also may be wondering why I didn't put a paused deadlift in this video so far. Well, a paused deadlift is my favorite deadlift variation, but it's not that nasty. You know what I mean? It's pretty comfortable. And that's not the point of this video. This video is the nastiest deadlift variations. And that's what this is right here, okay? It is a paused deadlift into a paused RDL. I'm gonna show you what I mean in a moment. Actually, I'll show you what I mean now, because before we keep talking about it, you probably have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. We'll do two repetitions, and you'll see what I mean. It's been a while since I've done these. We're gonna bring them back real soon, baby. All right, so no deficit for this one. Regular deadlift stance, okay? For me, it's pretty, pretty close with my stance here. Now, the first part of the movement is simply a paused deadlift. And then I get to the top, and then I execute a paused RDL. That is one rep. All right, guys, so that's the deadlift devotion. Now, as you can see, it is a paused deadlift into a paused RDL. Now, why I love this for positioning is you're essentially working it from both sides. And let me break that down for you, right? So the paused deadlift is extremely good for holding position off the ground, okay? When we get to that midpoint, we want that nice position, right? Where our chest is over the bar still towards the ground and we're not too upright like this. Okay, so we pull through to here. And now from this position, the way we're executing the paused RDL, we're essentially moving back down to a very similar position, but now we're working with gravity from the other way, right? Now it's trying to pull us back down and we're trying to maintain that position here and hold and finish back through. So, you know, in a way, that's a way more effective way of doing a rack pull, okay? That's why the regression of this movement, or the two regressions of this movement, are a paused deadlift by itself and an RDL by itself. Now I'm gonna demonstrate an RDL in a minute, and what I mean by it's, in a sense, a rack pull, but a lot better, right? You think about the position of it. So a rack pull, people are generally working their lockout, the top part of the lift. Now with an RDL, we're under tension the entire time, so we're not just aimlessly picking a bar up putting it back on the rack and going again, right? Being out of position every single time. What we're doing is we're forced here into a big brace and then we're slowly pushing our hips back and our chest to the floor and we're having to hold this position without being pulled around and down too far, right? We wanna maintain a nice strong position with the lats. Hold, this is where I'd be for a pause deadlift essentially. And then it's lock the knees, drive the hips through. Boom, okay? So that's, in a sense, a far better way to do a rack pull if you're so inclined. Now, the pause deadlift, you know, you've seen me do plenty of those. I'll give you a demonstration of that as a regression to the dev devotion, and then I'll give you an example of an RDL. And then we'll discuss, <clears throat> you know, how you could implement a deadlift devotion into your training program or an RDL or a pause deadlift as the regressions, but I do recommend you give this one a try because as I said, it is the nastiest of the nasty. We'll do a pause deadlift first, we'll go two repetitions, and then we'll do some RDLs. I'll make them paused RDLs because I'd say that's the true regression, okay? We're pausing the RDL, which is harder than a regular RDL. But first, pause deadlift. All right, now, RDLs. We start this movement though, from the top. So you get deadlifted up, and the breath is done at the top. All 
All right, guys, so just quickly, there is the regressions for the devotion, being a pause deadlift and a paused RDL. So what's important to remember with an RDL, with a deadlift devotion, is that with the RDL, a lot of people, if you step to the side just a little bit for me, when they're doing it, right, it's like when people are out of position for a deadlift, the reason they miss lockout is when they're coming past the knees here, they're pulling their chest up too high, pushing their knees under the bar, and they get to this point where they're trying to lap it. And it's very hard to squeeze through efficiently, right? So when we're doing, you know, this movement, we're thinking about how do we want to be looking at that midpoint, as I always say with deadlift, especially pause deadlifts, right? It's chest to the floor. We're not trying to keep our chest up like this because we stick our butt out, all right? It's about squeezing your lats, bracing your upper back, bracing here, and then pushing your ass back a little bit and your chest and eyes go towards the floor. Ready? Here, right? Where do I want to be in a pause deadlift? Here or here? Here. It's exactly the same. All right, that's why it's so good for positioning. So whether you're doing a devotion or an RDL or a pause deadlift, they're all positioning based movements. Putting it together makes it a lot harder, but it's extremely valuable. So with the rep ranges with a devotion, I wouldn't be doing more than five reps because every rep has two pauses. So that's a lot of time under tension. But if you're doing RDLs, you can afford to go six to 12, maybe 15 reps, especially if you're not doing the pause. And pause deadlifts, again, I like to utilize those mostly in the rep ranges of three to six reps, sometimes eight, but again, that's sometimes a little impractical um, when we're really doing this to work on positioning. Sometimes that amount of fatigue during a set can essentially put us into a bad position, which isn't what we're trying to do here. So it's also important to note when you're doing deadlifts, don't always work through your sets to where your technique breaks down and you're grinding reps out of the end. You're not ingraining good technique, it's not gonna help you in the long run. That's why it's important to not overreach, stick with the plan, the designated RPE or difficulty or percentage and execute the lift the best you can. Now, if you have any questions about this, about the deadlift devotion, about the RDL or any of it, please drop a comment, like this video, and if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. We've got one more to go, and it's probably going to surprise you. Definitely not what you expect. Let's get it. All right, guys, so there is the deadlift devotion and its regression. So now, this last deadlift variation or deadlift builder, we'll say, that I'm gonna show you, this is a hack for having a massive deadlift. This is simply a cheat code. Now, I implemented this exercise when I took my deadlift to 410 kilos. It was instrumental in giving me the strength that it took to do that, okay? Now, this exercise is probably not at all what you're expecting. Why is that? It's because it's not even a fucking deadlift. If you watched my video yesterday, I did Zercher squats. So, have a fucking guess. The Zercher squat, I believe, is the secret missing link to a lot of people's deadlifts. Now, it's not a, it's not a deadlift variation, no. So how does it build a big deadlift? Well, I'm gonna try and break it down for you, and I'll take you through it, and I'll show you how to do this movement correctly so you can build a big deadlift. Now I know what you're thinking, why wouldn't you do a Zercha deadlift instead? A couple of reasons. Okay, let's think about this. All of the deadlifts we do are a hip hinge pattern, right? There's a lot of fucking this happening. We're using our lower back a lot, okay? And using it more isn't always useful, okay? I do say this, we have to be smart with how we program. Now, there are ways to get stronger with movements without doing that exact movement. And this is a perfect example of that. So versus the Zercher deadlift where you hold the bar in your arms and bend forward like this, one, I really don't think you're gonna handle the same amount of weight. Two, with the Zercher squat, 
the, the difference is our goal is to remain upright, okay? Now that's different positioning to a deadlift, but why I'm saying this is all of the force, okay, the weight, the load is forward of the center of mass of your body, right? Center of your gravity. So it's pulling you down and forward. Now, the amount of strength and bracing that it takes your upper back to be able to stay upright with a really heavy weight pulling you down like this is crazy, okay? So the reason this is so good for building a big deadlift is just the savage raw back strength that it gives you and core strength because yes, it's your back, but your bracing through your midsection is also what prevents you from dipping forward, right? So you are squeezing every muscle in your upper body. I mean every muscle. You're pulling your hands back towards you as hard as you can, trying not to fucking lose the bar forward. I'm gonna give you a demonstration of this and explain to you how you should do it. Now, some people ask how deep should a Zercher squat be? If you watched my video yesterday, I wasn't squatting as deep as I usually would. Uh, if you do know, I am overcoming or recovering from a adductor tear, which is a tear high up in my groin muscle. So pushing depth on a squat right now is a little bit dangerous for me. I probably don't wanna risk a flare up or another tear. So I was cutting depth at about parallel, but ideally we'd like to go a little deeper. We want to be able to push our hips nice and deep down into the hole because not only is this a great deadlift builder, it's also a great squat builder. It's two birds with one stone. It's fucking excellent. And if you're not utilizing this in your training, you are missing out. I know it's painful, I know it hurts, and it's uncomfortable, but that's what it takes, you know? This is what separates the men from the fucking boys. If you want a big fucking deadlift, you have to build toughness in your entire body and in your mind, and this exercise is definitely good for that. Now, with the demonstration, I will go deeper because it's a little bit lighter today. I'm just gonna do 100 kilos. I went to 220 for pauses yesterday and my quads are toast. <clears throat> but I'll do a few repetitions here. Now, keep in mind, I'm trying to stay upright. Now, how do I stay upright? You'll see that I am opening my knees out and creating space with my hips because my elbows also have to come inside of my legs. I don't want my elbows hitting the top of my thighs because that will throw me forward and limit my depth. My, my depth. So I'm just trying to you know, tuck my elbows just inside of my thighs. We'll do, uh, we'll do say three or four repetitions. I won't move too fast. But we're trying to get the bar right up in our elbow crease. And remember, because we're doing this, we're not loading our bicep. The load isn't on the bicep, okay? Because I'm holding it here like this, it's close to my center of, of gravity, right? Now, if I was doing a Zercher squat like this, you wouldn't because the load would be all on your bicep and you would not be able to hold very much weight. Simple, right? So. Don't stress about your biceps. Keep your hands up towards your chest. I like to pull back towards my chest as hard as I can. Keeps it nice and secure, but the load is placed over the trapezius and your upper back. All right, so, very easy. As you can see, I am maintaining a very upright torso position, okay? So it's, it's into the hole, trying to keep as upright as possible. So I'm fighting, you know, gravity, because the bar is trying to pull me down like this. So, although I'm not using a deadlift pattern, my body is still reacting to the same forces, right? When you're holding a deadlift bar, in your hands, it's over the same line as this would be. It's in here or it's here. So we're still training a very similar movement pattern. It just looks a little bit different in its delivery. But if you're not doing this exercise, you are selling yourself fucking short. We'll take a moment, we'll summarize, and we'll talk about the Deadlift Destroyer training program. Let's get it. All right, guys. So. There is my breakdown of what I believe to be three of the nastiest, filthiest deadlift builders you could possibly do. Now, obviously I touched on 
the technique and how to perform these movements, you know, the rep ranges, how you should implement them in your training and why. Now, today was also a big day because we launched the Deadlift Destroyer 13 week deadlift building program. Now, if you're still a little unsure of the best ways to implement these exercises or any exercise into a program designed to give you a big deadlift, let me take the guesswork out of it for you. Pick up a program, run it as it is, and I guarantee you, you will get a bigger deadlift. Now, what can you expect in this program? Will you see any of these movements? Yes, you will. I'm not gonna tell you exactly which ones, but they make an appearance. Now, also, it comes with two days per week of training. Now, the secondary day, it is, I will say, somewhat optional, but let me explain why. If you're already running a program with squats, you know what I mean, then I wouldn't do the second day. But if you're open to potentially running a different kind of squat day with this deadlift program, that's what the program comes with. The squat day in the program is the secondary day, but that squat session is still designed to get you a bigger deadlift. Hint, hint, right? So I definitely recommend that you do the two days. However, if you are running other programs, you can definitely still make incredible gains just running the deadlift specific day, okay? That is available on my website. The link shall be here somewhere, coltstrength.square.site. If you have any questions, please email me, thecoltstrength at gmail.com. Also, before we go, make sure you like this video, drop a comment and subscribe. Now, one of the, I guess the markers that I'm seeing with my analytics on YouTube is that the videos that do the best are the ones that get the most subscribers. Now, I understand a lot of people watch my videos, but you may not have subscribed yet. So if you could subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. That is what helps me get my videos out to more people. And as I say, I love making these videos that can help you. And that allows me to keep putting the time into it that is required. Uh, also I have my Patreon, Cult Strength Patreon, Mindset Mentality and Mental Health Based. Um, you know, working on sharpening your tools to help you with your goals, specifically in the gym. But I thank you all for your support. I hope you got something out of this session. Uh, I do hope you pick up the Deadlift Destroyer. It is an unreal program. It is something based around exactly what I would do to achieve a big deadlift. And you may see me running it in the very near future. If I do, I'll create a playlist and we can do the program together. But until next time, you know what to do. Go to my website, get the program, and go to the fucking gym. Let's get it, baby.